Hello, how's it going? Well, uh, I put this together today. There's a bit of pre-spiel before the deal, the real deal, about this machine right here. I ended up, at some point over the Christmas break, sending an offer over on eBay on a quantity of things uh, that, I'm, that for, an, for an upcoming project. The person uh, messaged me because they were like, they couldn't understand why somebody would purchase 10 or 15 of these things. So, uh, so they were like, I don't suppose this is look mum, no computer. <laughs> or, or the museum or something. And I said, oh gosh, am I that predictable? Well, obviously I am. Well, the lovely person by the name of Matt, um, after saying that, well, they said they had a few things that they were gonna chuck in. That was really nice of them, really, really nice. And a few of these things were actually, a, a handful of these things were uni selectors. Some very strange ones, actually. So um, I was talking on the uh, a phone exchange forum, just asking for a bit of information about these from a fine gentleman called Andy. Mentioned it's from an at and uh, exchange. It's, it's quite nice, actually. Uh, they say that the standout piece of this thing, I've, by the way, I've already oiled these up to get them going again, is the fact that as the relay and as the solenoid energizes, the coil energizes, actually pushes this up away from the coil, which is kind of different to other things. It's a little bit funky. And there's some other interesting things, but we, I haven't used this. But then there's also these ones. Uh, Jason Workman uh, mentioned that these were Siemens um, uh, switches. So these are quite some in, in, interesting. There, there was two of these uh, that, that Matt put in with what I got. But these are uh, interesting in themselves. Oh, this one's way freer than it was. Uh, they were all very clunky and they didn't really work at the start, but I've managed to get them going. Well, uh, if you notice, your eagle eyes about you will notice that this is another one of those. So earlier today, I spent a couple of hours putting this together. The story with this is, um, we'll go back to the start, is Mike's electric stuff, Mike, uh, he came over to the museum in the summer and he really kindly dropped off a box of things. And in that box was some things that I've already built things with, like the plasma screen display. Uh, right here is one of them that Mike uh, dropped off and it has been sat in the uh, cabinet since, ever since. But now it's uh, got a uh, finally got a function. It's got a case, but um, but I'm not going to bother with the case on it because it's quite interesting on the inside. So what this what this is is it's an edge lit display. Uh, yeah. Uh, so if you look at it, uh, there's loads of panes of glass. In this instance, it's loads of panes of glass, and each of the panes of glass has a has an etched number in it. So the number when the light shines, there's light filaments that shine up. Uh, from the bottom and the top and light up the, uh, and as they get diffused on the etched numbers. Uh, I started shooting a video earlier, actually, and uh, I sh started shooting a video about a different edge lit display that I actually picked up when I went to see Mike the other day to drop off the, um, the eye testing, peripheral vision eye testing machine for him to tear down and then also pick up the Soviet uh, auto dialer. Well, he also sent us, it's in pieces right now because it's been driving me mad. I've been trying to get it to work and uh, I've got a couple of uh, uh, transistors on the way to make to figure out if it works. But this was another edge lit display. I started shooting the video. You may see it right now. I've put it over the top of it. The start stop motion of putting this back together and then ultimately realizing it. It's not fully working. Well, unless I'm using it wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. I just think a few of the transistors aren't playing ball. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a break. And I got a little bit annoyed with this. I spent about an hour or two just looking through and trying to figure out where the problems were lying. And the main thing was just understanding where, uh, this is the interface board and um, this is the decoder board. This is the, well, it's not even a driver board. It's, it's different, but where it basically takes in four bits, I guess. There's four pins that are, that take the data to choose which number is on the end. It's really cool, uh, but I haven't quite got that figured out yet. Uh, so I ended up going, oh yeah, Mike dropped off this. This didn't have the uh, decoder in the back, so I could do whatever the fudge I want. I was gonna, I was tempted to uh, be like, you know what, I'm just gonna take this circuit board off. But it seems a bit of a shame not using that when it's already there. So uh, that's a whole other project entirely. This looks a little bit more like the one that Fran Lab covered about three months ago with the bent acrylic plastic. These are acrylic kind of plastic where it shines and then it diffuses on the front and the bulbs are in the back here. 
For this one, the bulbs are on the bottom and the top. Uh, they actually, uh, there's the bulbs. In fact, I'll quickly ruin the ruin the surprise. Oh, it's not even plugged in. Oh no, it's not. It's not on, and it's not plugged in. So if you see you'll see that the lights shine and then as they go on the inside, actually let's do it in real time. Okay, I'm gonna hold on to this, see if I can push it in and then shine that, that light shines that pane of glass, which happens to be, oh, the power fell off. I don't know what number that was. Let's just pop this back in. And then I was just like, oh, I'll just, you know, I've run and I've, I've really uh, kind of spent a bit of time on this project. I need a, I sort of need a video this week for, for the museum channel and uh, I was a bit stumped and I was like, oh yeah, what if I mix this, which I was just trying to free up and try, try and get working with this, because this actually has 11 uh, pins. Let me just double check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, Yeah, yeah, I was just starting to doubt myself. So this had 11 pins and this has um, 11 digits. It's got zero to nine, which is 10 digits, and then a full stop, so there's, that's 11 different uh, panes. So what I did was I've wired this switch. I'll explain its function. Actually, let's push the button first and then I'll explain it. Um, oh, I've got the switch upside down. So yeah, yeah, as you can see, if I'll show you on this side as well. So yeah, I thought it was a little bit of fun. Basically, it's just gonna be displayed in the museum. It's a, it's a museum display, that's all it is. So, um, what it's, what it's doing is uh, when I push this switch, it sends 24 volts through the switch and it goes down into the coil of this. And the coil of this is uh, at the bottom. Uh, it's a little bit different to the other uni selectors as it doesn't have, I've just learned today, it doesn't have the interrupt switch, which was uh, this, these uni selectors, the ones that we were using before in that, this old Tony one. It had the, uh, a switch at the bottom, which as it pushes, it turns itself off. This doesn't have that. It's actually a lot simpler, this one. Uh, I think it's got it's got a different use, apparently. Not aware of the uses of this one. But so there's the two uh, powers, uh, two uh, uh, pins that go into the electromagnetic coil that when you energize, send 24 volts in this instance through. It attracts this bit, and then that sends forwards the, um, the ratchet and pinion to push this forwards. As you can see, it's got a really cool three-legged uh, switch uh, bank. So uh, it's always counting, but it goes this leg, selects through, and then the next one and the next one. And it's got three banks, one, two, three. Uh, when the one, this old Tony one's had a mountain of them, had, what, how many is that? Nine, nine banks of them. So it's cool, it's a nice different one. And then obviously this bigger one that we were talking about, which I thought were the same as these, but apparently these are Siemens, these are AT and T. This one's just a chunky, chunky, chunky monkey. It's really nice, but um, we'll be using it, I'm sure at some point. So thank you Matt for this, and thank you Mike for this. <laughs> very, very kind of both of you. Um, so yeah, I just decided it would be good to set up as a museum display. Always trying to knock through the different displays, got a mountain of them. So the plan for this is I 3D printed this random bit of plastic thing. It's see-through, I sprayed it black, just to make it look a little bit more not 3D printed in a way. And um, it's just got, the plan is it's just gonna sit in here. I'm gonna screw it in. So it's quite raised so you can see it, and then I'll have a plastic on the top, and then the switch will go here with another 3D printed part and then yeah yeah you're gonna flick it it's not gonna have the front so you can see around the side where the edge lit is edge light is but I just I think I'm really quite pleased with this I'm really am um, quite quite proud of that it's really nice and really simple so the other thing that I had to do keep in mind was the fact that these are bulbs and when the bulbs are used too much, they might be more prone to blowing, uh, which isn't a bad thing actually, because these would easily be 
fixed and replaced with LEDs. Obviously LEDs have a different, they don't charge up like that and they don't go down, but you can actually have different colors, which might be cool. So like pink and blue and stuff, but then it look, might look more like the modern version of these, but I like this for its vintage kind of look because of the bulb. So I need to find, yeah. So what I did to prolong the length of life of it was also the, uh, the voltage, um, the lights only light up when you push the button. So what this does is you push the button, it forwards it one, and then it stays on until you take your finger off the, the button. It's as simple as that. There's not much uh, energy going through this. It's just enough to get it energized, so it's not gonna overheat if you hold this on to watch this for a few seconds. Nobody's gonna hold it on for 10 minutes, are they? They're just gonna get bored. So, well, there's a challenge now, um, but yeah. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to shine it. Uh, question is for this, do I spray the inside of this box? Do I spray that black to uh, kind of work with the whole colour scheme of this? Or do I leave it wood? It will have a clear front on it, um, just to stop fingers getting in and breaking this uh, beautiful switch mechanism and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, quite, I'm really pleased with this. It's a really nice little quick and easy thing that took, probably took an hour to put together and it's just really nice because it's just hours of hours of fun that's going to be. Anyway, I'm going to finish this off with a few nice beauty shots. Let's get closer in. Let's get closer in now. Here we go. Lovely, anyway, thanks a lot Matt, thanks a lot Mike, it's uh, turned out really nice, thank you.